Coach D'Antonio, give an opening statement, and then we will take questions. We're excited about being here today. Uh, it's the start of the 2015 season. Come a long way since coming here in 2007 with uh, a number of things that we've been able to accomplish with the last four bowl, vi bowl victories and uh, you know two Big Ten championships and top five things and things of that nature. But with that being said, uh, I think our focus is to always continue to try and reach higher. Talked to our players last uh, last winter as we got together winter workouts, and the first thing we talked about was just the things that I just mentioned here. But yet we fall, fell short of our goals. So with that being said, we need to continue to try and improve where we're at, move it forward. I'll take some questions. Thank you. Did you have a question? We have a question right down here first. We'll start with Teddy. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll send one of our microphone holders over to you. Coach, what are your expectations and hopes for Connor Cook's performance this season? Well, the same thing. You know, I think that uh, Connor's done an, a remarkable job, extraordinary job uh, throughout uh, his time. Came on the scene in 2013 and, you know, capped off the season with an MVP in the Rose Bowl as a sophomore and then uh, an MVP in the Big Ten Championship game as well. This past season did an outstanding job. Very, very few times was he sacked, not a lot of interceptions. But there's always room for improvement. I think he's come back with uh, with the idea that uh, there are things left to prove. And um, you know, he's going to continue to take his game to a higher level. And that's exciting because I think the, the makeup of our football team, I think, in general is, you know, keep trying to strive forward, keep trying to move move the process forward and be as good as you can be, possibly be. So high expectations uh, from our staff and from the general public, very high expectations, very high expectations from he himself. Okay, we'll go over here to stage, stage right, coach in the middle. Go, coach, at other conference media days over the past uh, week or so, coaches from other conferences have indicated that they think that programs other conferences or a Notre Dame might have an advantage because they play a different number of conference games. In a playoff era, do you think that uh, conference scheduling or strength or, or out of conference scheduling is something that should be standardized? Uh, I think it's probably pretty tough to standardize it, but um, I think we all, we're all looking for an even playing field as we move forward in everything, whether it's uh, uh, cost of attendance or scholarship numbers or all these different things. I think we look for a, a, a level playing field. But with that being said, you know, we, you know, I just play them as they come. You know, really, I mean, you, these these uh, these contracts with who we're playing are made up probably four, five, six years in advance. And so I'm trying to focus on what we have to deal with and, uh, and try to move it from there. Everybody's got their own program to run. Uh, so that's what we'll do with ours. Our next question is on the aisle in the back of the room, and then we'll come over here. How has Connor Cook handled all the Heisman hype and expectations heading into his senior year? Well, we're going to find out a little bit more of that as we move into the season, certainly. But um, at this point, I think that he has people around him that will ground him on a daily basis, whether it's coaches, whether it's our strength staff, uh, whether it's the people on our football team. So I think all of us need to stay grounded and be able to, to constantly improve daily. I know he's working extremely hard day to day uh, with our with our skilled players and that things of that nature to, to try and establish himself, further establish himself. So I think he's done a great job with it. But... Um, you know, these things are decided at the end of the season, not at the beginning. So I think that we've, we've constantly talked about that. You know, he'll, be, he'll, be, he'll do a nice job with it. Our next question, Coach, is toward the back stage, right? Mark, you've talked often about your offensive line, and this could be the best one you've had since you've got at Michigan State. Would you talk about the depth of that line and how good it is being able to go forward? Yeah, Coach Staten, our offensive line coach, has done an outstanding job with those guys. We have built this from the ground up as we've moved forward. Uh, guys like Jack Allen, Jack Conklin, Donovan Clark, they're there now for their third year starters. Uh, some of them are maybe a fourth year coming in the future. Uh, Brian Allen, Cody Keeler, those are the, the five guys, but we've got other guys that, that are making their move. Uh, I anticipate us playing eight guys again, much like we have. We've got uh, depth in the offensive line position, which is huge in college football, and, and I believe that you win up front. Jim Bowman has done an outstanding job as our tight end coach, and he's an offensive line coach 
in trade for a long time standing. So he gives Coach Dayton, you know, bounce back things, you know, ideas to bounce off of him. And so he's involved in that as well. But I think uh, Mark Steen has done a remarkable job with our guys. They believe in him. They believe in the structure there. It's built on toughness. And if you know football, winning and losing, it all starts up front. And it's going to start with our offensive line. Okay, our next question, Coach, is on our left toward the middle. How is he adjusting to the transition to free safety and how you expect his play, his play to improve? Uh, I didn't catch the name. Oh, I'm sorry. R.J. Williams. R.J. R.J. will be going into his fourth year as a um, as a player back there, so he knows things as well as our coaches, really. I mean, we have him out there when in summer camp coaching our high school kids and things of that nature that are in our camps, and uh, he does an outstanding job. Uh, he's got a display. His leadership changes every single year. Curtis Drummond was our leader last year in the secondary. That changes. That's a fl- free-flowing thing uh, at every position, and I think his opportunities to lead are going to be uh, really what set him apart this year. Very good player, tough, goes about 210 pounds. Hopefully. I think he's 216 right now. Got great ball skills, a lot of experience. I think we're talented at the safety position and, and uh, our corner position as well. I think we've got great players in the back end, guys that are just waiting their opportunities. So it's going to be exciting to watch those guys. The floor is open right now. If you have a question, please raise your hand. And we have one in the back, back in the middle. Thank you. Uh, Jim Comperoni, SpartanMag.com. Mark, uh, new defensive coordinator this year, a pair of coordinators with uh, Mike Tressel and Har- Harlan Barnett. I'm curious, how have your communications with those two coaches changed this year in terms of preparation for this season, in terms of meetings? Has it been different with those coaches in anticipation of the changes coming up? Well, we really stayed the course, you know, uh, with with our defense. Uh, Those guys have been in that defense and working together for the last 12 years. Uh, Ron Burton's the third guy. We brought Mark Snyder on, who was our linebacker coach when when I was the defense coordinator at Ohio State. Uh, So I feel like we have a lot of experience there. We've got a lot of players coming back. We have some bell cows at every single position. Uh, So that's that's exciting to watch as well. But uh, we're always going to critique everything that we do. Regardless of whatever year it's been, we critique it, we add some things, we subtract some things, and we try and rebuild a little bit differently or, or keep a lot of things structurally the same. But we're always trying to look to improve and, uh, and critique what we've done, and that's, that's been the norm. As far as uh, those two guys, they have a tremendous amount of um, respect for both of them, the job that they've done. They've both had opportunities to leave and become coordinators or, or co-coordinators or go into the NFL and those type of things, and they've stayed the course. I think they deserve this opportunity. This is an opportunity for growth, much like from a defensive coordinator becoming a head coach. There's a lot of growth that has to take place. So the same thing happens um, when, uh, when you go from position coach to a coordinator position. I think they've done an outstanding job with that thus far, and um, the proof is in what the players say. When I have my player meetings with our with our players throughout May and June, about a half hour each with 100 plus players, uh, you know that question gets asked. So they have a great deal of respect for both those coaches, and um, we're going to be fine, and we're going to pick up exactly where we left off. We'll stay in the same part of the room for the next question. Coach, a lot of attention has been paid to people like Connor Cook and Shalik Calhoun returning to campus and not leaving for the NFL. Can you talk about what it means to have a player like Jack Conklin back on the O-line this year? Well, Jack Conklin is uh, an outstanding player. He's a guy that for everybody out there that came there as a true walk-on and uh, was put on scholarship at mid-year. So expectations coming in was to see what he could do, and he has um, excited us from day one when he stepped on the field. So He's a guy that has that not only is a great football player, but he has great aspirations and very high goals, not just individual goals, but team goals as well. Uh, we ask one of our goals of our football program in general is to be givers, not takers. And Jack Conklin is a giver. Uh, there's no question in my mind about that. And he sees the big picture. 
So um, it's excited to have him back as well as, as our other guys. And, uh, you know, Jack Allen as well. He's an outstanding player that uh, really is the heart and soul, I think, of our offensive line. So um, very excited about those opportunities that they have in front of them, both individually and collectively as a group and as a team. Our next question, Coach, will go to our left down here toward the front. Coach, can you talk about the uh, development of Joey Price at the tight end? He had a breakout year last year for you. Yeah, Josiah Price is a guy, uh, you know, in 2013, much like our tailback situation, we had no identity at tight end. Deion Sims had left um, early for the, for the draft, and we had young players. And our tight ends now really are just like our offensive line, our strength on our football team. We'll go three or four deep in there, and uh, we'll play a lot of guys, and Jim Bowman coaches those guys, and they've really become a big part of our offense in so many different ways. So Josiah is an outstanding um, blocker. He's an outstanding pass catcher. Uh, he's got the ability to go vertical down the field. He's got great hands, great confidence, and, uh, again, he's about giving back to other people. He's a tremendous role model for young people. Next question, Coach, all the way on our right, and then we'll come right down here. Hi, Mark. Dave Biddle from 24-7 Sports. Can you talk about the rivalry between Michigan State and Ohio State? And furthermore, what did you think about Ohio State winning the national championship and what effect that might have on the Big Ten? First of all, I think uh, it's a rivalry because, for me, because I'm from Ohio, we have so many players from Ohio on our football team. You know, I think 27 last year. So it's sort of comes with the territory at Michigan State a little bit. Uh, so it is it is for us a rivalry. I have deep respect for what they, they've they done down there. I was a part of that back in the early 2000s. And, um, and I respect that tradition very, very much. Um, the second question was... Second question? Oh, I see Ohio State. Uh, they were very, 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 very much like our 2013 team. A lot of things to overcome as the season presented itself. Challenge after challenge as they moved forward. Losing the football game, close, um, quarterback decisions, all those type of things. And so at, at every time they got hit with adversity, they met that adversity. And I think they grew stronger and stronger as the course of the time went. And uh, you know, ultimately they win the national championship because ultimately they're playing their best football in November. And I think that's what happened and uh, congratulate them for that. Great coaching job. Our next question is right down here, the gentleman in the orange shirt. Yeah, Mark, could you speak to the buzz of uh, what you guys, the way y'all had your bowl victory last year and stuff, a big comeback and stuff, and also following up on the Ohio State thing, what that did for the league as a whole, do you think, from a uh, national stature standpoint? Tim May, Columbus Dispatch, by the way. Uh, first of all, the bowl game, um, our bowl game victory was very, very exciting. It, it showed that uh, we could be mentally tough and continue to push through tough times and be able to help. Uh, come on on the front end at the end of the game. And I think we just kept playing. And that was the thing that, that I remember about that game. You know, even though we were 20 behind, if we could just get 13 behind, we're back in the game. Uh, so that's what we were able to do. And I think the buzz behind that um, sort of catapulted the whole Big Ten forward based on other things that happened. You know, not only Ohio State's victories in bowl games, but a lot of the other teams. I think we were... I think we won five bowl games, I believe. So that was very exciting for the league. As far as the national championship, I've said all along that great football is played in the Big Ten Conference as it is played in, in all these other conferences. Great football, there's a lot of parity in college football. Things hang by the inches. And when people get hot, great things can happen. And you, I think you saw that last year by the, the answer to the question prior to. Um, good football team, good players, well coached. A lot of confidence, got hot, you know, you know the rest. But I uh, thought it was a, uh, an outstanding season for them. Your time for one final question. It'll come right here in front of us. Coach, uh, Mike Griffith from MLive.com. Could you compare your defensive line uh, quality and depth to others you've had at Michigan State and even maybe going back to your time as defensive coordinator at Ohio State? Yeah, this is our, our defensive front is, is maybe as uh, talented a group as we've had since I've been – certainly at Michigan State in these last nine years, and I would put it very much on par with, uh, with the defensive line we had at Ohio State. 
uh, you know, 2000, uh, 2002 season. So, uh, you know, Shalit Calhoun comes back. This guy that uh, did not go to the draft primarily because he wanted to graduate. First in his family to graduate. Would have been a high draft pick, first or second round. You know, Lawrence Thomas is coming into his own. He can play defensive end or, or uh, inside of three techniques, 290 pounds or plus, depending on which biscuits he eats in the morning. Um, you know, Joel Heath comes back for his third year as a starter. And, uh, you know, Malik McDowell is a guy that is just touching, scratching the surface in terms of how, how good he can be. It's, you know, 6'6 six, six plus, you know, 310 pounds and can run and do the things he needs to do. With that being said, we have guys that can play around back there, uh, in and out of there, that can make uh, the situation even better. Montez Sweat, very exciting player. Demetrius Cooper, very exciting player. Um, got guys on the inside like Damon Knox with a lot of experience, so we go deep too. And it uh, should be a strength of our football team. Ron Burton has done an outstanding job as our defensive line coach, getting those guys ready. And they, they come to play every single practice, and they're pushed. Thank you very much, Coach. Thanks so much. Go Green. I just want to give a shout-out to all of our players coming and currently from the, state, from the city of Chicago. Go Green.